Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I went to the library and checked out way too many books for the winter season. So today is going to be a library haul where I'm going to be discussing the books that I have checked out, what I'm going to be reading for this winter season, and what I think about these books before I've even jumped into them. But first of all, I do take suggestions. So if you have a book you would like me to review, please leave it in the comment section below. If it's a book that I can order to my library, I will read it, review it, and post the review on my channel. So please leave your suggestions below. Now let's jump into this library haul and what I'm going to be reading during this snowy, rainy winter season of the year. So first I'm going to go through the fiction books that I have checked out and then I'm going to move into the nonfiction. So that's going to be the order of things. So let's just jump right in right away with a series that I haven't really thought much about, but I thought could be interesting. That is this The Remarried Empress series. We have volumes one and two right here. It is a, I would say manga, but maybe it's not out of Japan. It is a graphic series. And I did get one and two in case I liked one, I could immediately jump into two, or if one left on a cliffhanger, I could jump into two. I believe the premise is the couple, the emperor and empress are going through a divorce of some sort and the empress is going to remarry. So I did kind of like the idea that the romance was starting off with this divorce. So it's not starting fresh or from single or from a breakup, but it's starting from a divorce. And I presume it's going to be a romance going forward, but I'm not entirely sure. Again, just the covers and the colors drew to me and then reading the back, I would, thought the premise was a little interesting. So we're going to try The Remarried Empress and this is original story by Alphatar, adapted by Hira Lee, art by Sumpool, which makes me think this may have been some sort of webcomic, uh, just based on that up there, the adapted by, um, makes me think that. So we're gonna give this a try and see what I think. I do see it's rated T on the back for, I believe, language. And that makes me feel good too because I don't like a lot of explicit content and I did check this out of the adult graphic novel section at my library but I think it's not going to be too graphic or explicit due to the rating on the back. So we're going to give these a read, see what I think about The Remarried Empress. Oh, oh my. Next is a science fiction fantasy book. This is 16 Ways to Defend a Walled City by K.J. Parker. This is, I believe, a fantasy book because the author is a World Fantasy Award winning author and it feels more fantasy-esque, but the, the spine label from the library says science fiction. I believe they lump both science fiction and fantasy maybe under the same title. This one has been sitting in my mind for maybe a, a year and a half now. I've seen this on my library shelves and I've always wanted to check it out and give it a try, but I've never really felt like I could fit it into my reading schedule. This time I decided to pull it off and give it a read, so we're just going to be checking it out. I think the premise, the title sounds interesting. Uh, it just, I believe, is a city under siege and someone who is charged or tasked with taking care of the siege from the city's perspective. So we're going to see what this is about. This was solely picked out just due to my personal interest in the cover, the title, and it just seemed intriguing, which to be honest is how I get most books out of the library. Unless I have a specific recommendation or reading challenge, I am reading for. It's just me walking around pulling things off the shelf that sound interesting. The next one is going to be one that kind of straddles that line between fiction and nonfiction. It kind of falls also into mathematics, I feel like. This is Flatland, A Romance of Many Dimensions by Edwin A. Abbott. So this is kind of a small book or a shorter book. The premise of this, to my understanding, is we follow Square, who is a two-dimensional creature, and they have an extraterrestrial or extra a UFO kind of esque experience with a three dimensional being, which is very shocking for a square which lives in the two dimensional space. I have actually heard of the premise of this book before, but I don't believe I have read it despite being familiar with the premise. I wonder if I have for a class somewhere just because it is so familiar, but I'm going to give it a reread and see what I think about it. So Flatland by Edwin Abbott is on my reading list. Again, I don't really know if this feels more fiction or more nonfiction. I feel like it is fiction to illustrate a nonfiction point, but it should be enjoyable either way. It was shelved in my library in the nonfiction section, but in like the literature section. So that's where Flatland was. And Flatland is going to transition us into the nonfiction books that I have checked out of the library. 
First up is by Eckert Fram, Assyria, The Rise and Fall of the World's First Empire. This is a little bit of a bigger book, but the text isn't super small, so I think it's not going to be too bad. I had to guess 400 or 500, 400 pages about. And I got this out because I'm very interested in Mesopotamia and Mesopotamian history. It's been very interesting to me since it was first introduced to me in probably middle school or late elementary school. And I feel like out of all these empires and civilizations that existed in early history or in antiquity in this region, Sumerians, Babylonians, Assyrians, Persians, I feel like out of all of those, I know the Assyrians, or I know the least specific information about the Assyrians. So when I saw this book, I decided to check it out and maybe try to correct that situation by learning more about the Assyrian Empire. And I am intrigued by it, and I think this will be a very interesting read. I do find that the Mesopotamian history section of my library tends to have a lot of older books, but this one was actually written in 2023, so it's a newer book, which I really appreciated, and I'm excited to give this a read and see what I think about it. I don't think I've read anything by this author before, so it will be interesting. Next up is... World Heritage Japan by John Lander. I believe this is just a collection of World Heritage sites in Japan with photography and information. So I am excited to flip through this. At some point in my life, I would love to visit Japan. I think it's a very interesting place and I feel like getting a flip through this book might show me or might introduce me to some things I would like to add to an itinerary. But I'm not entirely sure what this is about. I'm going to have to read it, but the title intrigued me. And I also wonder if there's World Heritage site books for other countries. Maybe this is a series that includes other countries and each book has the World Heritage sites for the specific country mentioned. So we have World Heritage Japan and we're gonna see what this is about. Next up is another book, of course. This is The Art of Japanese Prints. This is what the cover looks like. And this is just what it says, Art of Japanese Prints. Last year, 2023, I really got interested in Japanese woodblock printing and I read a number of books on Japanese woodblock prints. There's a number of those books on woodblock prints on my channel reviewed. So if that sounds interesting to you, go check those out. But this seems to be an overview and I'm going to be interested in flipping through this book and giving it a read and then reviewing it when I'm done. This one is not too big either. Finally, I have two books that I saw in my library's catalog and I got out because I was interested in the art and that is Fairies and Trolls. Now these are, let me show these in a different way. These are kids books, as you can tell, they're very, very thin, but I really actually was drawn to the art on the cover and I haven't really flipped through them, but they are very, very small, which makes sense. They are kids books. So I'm going to probably review these. If I do review these, I'm going to review them together because I kind of checked them out for the art. But I'm not really sure what to expect. Again, the text is really not going to be the draw for me on these because they are kids books, but I'm hoping the art is as good quality as the cover because it really drew my eye and attention out of the library catalog despite them being kids books. So I'm very intrigued for what these books have to author offer, but I probably will review these together just because I feel like there's not enough content for me to review and I don't, I feel like I don't review or read kids books often enough to have a comprehensive review of a kids book so I'm probably just going to be talking about the art more than the text in these books if I do review them. So that is what I'm reading this winter. That's probably not all I am reading this winter. I love going to library, wandering around, finding hidden gems, listening to audiobooks. So there will be plenty of reviews of books not in this list and of course as always if you have books that you would like to recommend that I do not have I'm not reading now, please leave it in the comment section below and I will order them and I will read them because I like getting your suggestions and I've gotten a lot of great reviews from this YouTube channel from people who have watched it and left their reviews. So please leave your suggestions in the comments below and if any of these seem interesting, stay tuned for my review on these books in the coming weeks. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.